Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I have here another Peugeot 407. So I've done a similar video on one of these not so long ago. And we talked about what a lot of my commenters were saying is planned obsolescent, obsolescence uh, or cars that are preset to have a fault at a certain year or mileage. So once they reach a certain age or reach a certain mileage, it will chuck up a fault um, telling you to replace a certain part. And the big question is, is do you actually need to replace that part? Now I did have a lot of people saying, you know, it's they should, you know, is it is it legal to do that? They should be brought to court, etc. But like I'm going to say on this one, is it viable for them to do this, or is it? You think it's something that shouldn't be done? The problem is with this is a particle filter problem now, DPF problem. But the word in itself is particulate filter, which means it's a filter. So the same as you'd get on some cars where you'd get a, a service warning come up. You just, you, your car needs a service. Now you could also say, does my car need a service? I'm just trying to compare it to say, when you get an error come up to say that your DPF needs to be replaced. People say, you know, people have said, how can they do that? In the, re in the reality of the terms, if you think about it, a DPF is a diesel particulate filter. So they can recommend uh, a time to change it. So it's service intervals, basically. So this car has the engine management light on, and this customer has been round in a circle trying to get the issue resolved. Um, obviously, being told it needs new filter, and he's done a lot of searching on the internet and he's come across me so he wants me to see if I can sort this out. So this diagnostic scan tool I'm using is Launch Eurotab 3 from Launch UK. And if we go on to the power supply um, engine issue, sorry, we can read default codes here. So we're going to take down also these two, ECU wake ups uh, invalid. But the main problem here is this one. P1445, the maximum threshold of additive in the particle filter reached. So what that means is that the particle filter is at the end of life, it's not doing its job anymore and it needs to be replaced. So let's have a look at some live data and see how true that is. Let's have a look at what we have here. Have we got differential pressure yes we have so we'll select all of those degree of particle filter clogging so that is programmed into the car okay now there's two ways of looking at this like I said is it a scan or is it fair service and maintenance see the problem is is this car isn't worth a lot of money and I can tell you it's about two and a half grand worth of quotes and yeah basically the car isn't worth that so particle filter degree of clogging is at 100% we're not getting the, f we're not getting the differential pressure there let me go back and just search for it properly particular filter here Okay, something's happened there. We've had a crash. Let's load that up again. Okay, back in. Uh, degree of particle filter clogging, so clogging. Distance remaining until the particle filter replacement. So this is the main issue here that I'm talking about. Distance remaining until the particle filter needs to be replaced. So whether or not your particle filter is working, you'll get an error like we have here saying you need your particle filter replaced even though it could be well and truly working exactly as it should now let's have a look at the differential pressure so the main thing that that causes your dpf to not work properly is too much pressure within the dpf too much pressure within the dpf can be caused by too much clogging of soot 
or over time that soot gets burned into ash I've made videos on that before as it gets burned into ash the ash can't can't burn can't burn off so the ash remains inside the DPF and over time it's the ash starts filling up some of the holes in the DPF and then when uh, some of those holes are closed you get increased pressure in the DPF so you get very high pressure in the DPF and then it no longer works so it would need replacing but let's have a look does this actually need replacing or not now of course at the Peugeot dealership they're saying yes it does need replacing particle filter soot load and the pressure so the only thing that matters theoretical distance remaining before replacement of the particle filter so you can see there we have a 100% soot clogging so you'd, you'd expect there to be a lot of pressure within the DPF we've got a hundred percent clogging pressure within the DPF itself is zero millibars so let's give it a rev up to 3000 rpm we're at 3500 rpm and we have 42 millibars of pressure distance remaining before the particle filter needs to be replaced zero miles so just because this timer has run out the mileage timer has run out and it, the time has run out for the car basically it's now saying that you need a two and a half grand maintenance done on it um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this DPF it's working just as good as the day it was brand new you can see it got zero millibars at idle and it's only got 45 millibars at 3200 rpm so let's fix the problem without doing any repair whatsoever let's come back out of here go to special functions so just turn the engine off now we're just gonna tell the car it's had a new DPF placement of the EGR valve no we've not got after sale so here we are diesel additive ECU particle filter replacement it's a little bit of a different setup on this vehicle now it's not, not normal you'd normally see that got its own menu particle replaced on the new look Citroen C5 why is it even well it's not a Citroen C5 but they're basically the same car Now it's reset to zero. Oh, we've already done that. Let's just continue. It. Done. Now let's go back to read default code. Press clear. And that's gone. Now if we come back here and look at this menu, what I forgot to mention is there, you can see there the actual mileages where it's telling you it needs to be replaced. So 180,000 kilometres at certain engines, some are 100,000 kilometres, 120 and 180,000 kilometres again. Okay, back in the live data or data stream, we have reset these. So you can see it's got replacement until distance remaining until you need to replace the particle filter. So that's been reset to 299 whatever kilometers and we with that reset it's it's only gone back to 22 percent so it doesn't go back to zero it's gone back to these levels and you can see the amount of additive in the dpf is now at zero grams now like i said there's zero millibars at idle on the vehicle and if we give it a rev up Forty two millibars. A little bit over three thousand RPM.
Now, the reason I think planned obsolescence would be brought into this, into this, uh, into question here would be, you know, once a vehicle gets a little bit older, um, you know, it's going to be in a lot of people's mind. You know, if they brought this into Peugeot, um, and they're getting quoted big amounts of money to have this rep repaired. I think a lot of garages would say, you know, um, why not use your old car to part exit in for a newer one? We'll use this as a, you know, as the scrappage scheme or whatever they're, they've been doing in England lately. Um, I think a lot of people are going to say, you know, it's not worth spending a couple of grand on this car. You know, we could go and buy another one for, for half of that. You could buy a, the whole car for maybe a grand. Um, and then, you know, you so you've just scrapped a car that's working fine just to buy another one or buy a newer car I think it's a I think it's a, it's a bit of a mixture of both uh, with this situation mixture of both in uh, yeah it may need service but I mean that's why you're that's that's why you're you're you you've got sensors on the DPF so you've got a differential pressure sensor to tell you when the DPF pressure is high and that should really trigger off the fault to say look your DPF pressure is too high uh, it's tried to do regen and it didn't work so it looks like it's going to need replacing but this is just chucking up a fault saying your DPF needs to be replaced for no good reason apart from mileage ok now you can see if we start the vehicle back up engine lights gone and we are now driving down the road without any repair just a press of a few buttons and I can tell you that this vehicle is going to work for the rest of its life with that DPF in there Tell you what, this car drives better than most new cars I've been in. Very comfortable. Okay, so that's it. Diesel particle filters, and some cars are putting up this error saying that they need to be replaced. Now, on the last video I made of this, um, we'll have a little chat about that. So yeah, the last video I made on one of these, it was a Peugeot again, and some people said, well, I don't see the problem because when you plugged it in, the DPF pressure was slightly high. It was at something like 12 millibars of pressure, but like I explained in that video is your engine light comes on like like it has done on this and once that goes on the car goes into like a restricted performance mode and then as you drive it over time and time your DPF will start to block up not because of the, so the pressure wasn't there before the fault came You're, as the fault's triggered off like it has on this one we've got zero pressure but the fault is there now if he continues to drive that that DPF pressure will gradually increase over time because the DPF then isn't working properly it's in a restricted performance mode um, and it's not going to perform any first three generations so the fault is basically killing the part if you know what I mean so that's about it really on, on, on that matter now you can give your own opinion on that if you think it's a, it's a reasonable thing that uh, that that should happen they should have this error on there but you know in my opinion is if this error do sh does come up it should have you know a, a proper message to the customer saying that they you know the life of the DPF has exceeded so have it checked and if the pressure is good then you know leave it at that but if it's not then change your DPF but the problem is is once this falls here 99.9% .9 of garages are just going to replace the DPF because it's, that's what the fault is telling them to do Okay, now all of that's done. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to carry on with the video. Um, you can answer your own part on that half of the video. So I'm just going to carry on here. And what I'm going to do now is, because of that fault saying that the additive injected in has reached the limit, what that's also going to mean is now that the, the additive tank is now is now going to be empty. Um, because it's, it's obviously calculated that it's put all of the fluid into the DPF. So what that means is your DPF now needs replacing and the additive tank will also need looking at. So we're going to get the car lifted up and we're going to top up the additive tank just to make sure that it's not empty. Okay, so under the rear of the car here we have the additive tank or the Eli's tank right here. Okay, now what I've done is I've disconnected this little hose here and I'm connecting up my bottle of diesel additive fluid here. So we're just going to hold this up high and that'll gravity feed into the tank. Okay, so that's one litre gone in. And that is two bottles. Now we're on to number three. So it'll take... Should They normally take 
around about two and a half litres, 2.7, 2.8 litres to fill the tank. Okay, now the additive has been topped up, we'll come back to special functions. Now again, this is a launch uh, scan tool, so it should be pretty similar for most other makes. We're going to click on after sales of the particle filter, diesel additive ECU, additive tank top up or replacement. So just read through that. So basically that's telling you you need to open the fuel tank or if you've replaced the whole tank you need to start a pump actuator to prime it up. So we're going to press OK. That's done. Cancel off. Now we're going to open the fuel cap. 10 seconds has gone. We can now put the cap back on. Okay, so that's all been done. You can see ECU now is all clear. So that's it. We're all finished on the Peugeot 407. And I'll see you on the next video.